Good morning, folks. Boom. The Big Sunspot Group 2192 unleashed an X-Class solar flare yesterday in the 1400-hour UTC. It produced a radio blackout under the sunlit side of the planet for the duration of the event. For days, we've watched this active region destabilize at Delta-Class sunspot complexities within the group, multiple M flares, and this being the second X flare. But oddly, there has not been major ejecta, no big CMEs. In fact, some simultaneous limb eruptions accompanying the flare itself were all that released plasma and charged particles, but did so well away from Earth's line of fire. This is all part of what we call the Earth-facing quiet. Back in the Maunder Minimum, the scientists noticed a lack of major sunspots facing our planet and thought the Earth might have a depressive effect. It wasn't seen again until 2011. Sunspots began fading. The region stopped flaring as much and when they did, they failed to produce major ejecta. This sunspot group itself has stayed together, not had major decay. It has produced some solid flaring, although don't forget we should be getting X10s and the like during solar maximum. These flares are just not very scary, especially when they don't produce coronal mass ejections. Delta spots do persist, however, and the solar watch continues. New spots coming in as well. Just a reminder, most of North America will have some sort of visibility for tonight's solar eclipse. Late afternoon into sunset, the event should be spectacular. I've linked a graphic for you below the video showing what time the eclipse will be visible from different portions of the continent. If you can catch it, I highly recommend it. Next, we have to give a major well done to the European Southern Observatory for their latest on Beta Pictoris. ALMA has imaged the surrounding matter so well we can study exoplanets and even the comets of the system. The article, photos, and this animation are linked for you below. Another gamma ray burst rang out yesterday, again, way down south in the heavens. Solar wind speed began to drop off the last 24 hours, but the density remained elevated. Geomagnetic instability is low. Plasma penetration is minor only, and we've got only minor perturbations in our magnetic systems, that one at the time of the X-flare. Coronal hole, exiting. Big plasma filament, swinging in up north. It will be an eruption concern in the coming days. So you will all recognize Soho Lasco. This is called a coronagraph, and NASA is about to test out the next generation of technology that could improve these ultra black nano coatings. Link to the article is below. Hopefully this will step in for the aging satellite fleet up there already. Some other good articles linked for you below include imaging and insight into a nearby galaxy that we see pretty much on the galactic axis and the star formation surrounding it. A mysterious glow on Titan. Read how the experts are quite confused by what they're finding in the polar atmosphere in terms of organic compound abundance. And finally, a good before and after shot of the drought developing in parts of Brazil. Not a very fun situation. Indian Ocean has a low we're watching for development. Hopefully no cyclone forms there. Anna out in the Pacific likely wouldn't still be alive if not for the flaring. It's actually going to survive most of the way back up to the Canadian coastline. Our Gulf Storm hasn't been named yet, but it has made landfall and should be weakening. We've still got the nor'easter raging near New England, bringing the mix again today. High pressure in the remainder of the east should keep things clear for tonight's eclipse. Then the same heat and moisture flow is creeping slowly across the center of the country. And finally you see those Alaskan lows still pulling moisture ashore. Tonight's watch zones for the US and Canada follow those patterns. Snow is very possible out west as well. North Atlantic low driving moisture across the north and western nations here while the slippery little convergence still exists to the southeast. You should be able to see the flows converging down there. Rain and flood warnings across a wide area but the convergence takes the storm alerts. Another convergence area difficult to see in the southeast portion of Australia. Air flows coming in from different areas to meet there and that's the storm zone tonight. Mobile Observatory is in Nashville today at Centennial Park, 3 p.m. Head over to observatoryproject.com for details. Got some shots of our star to close, and the solar watch continues. 
6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.35 a.m. here in Tennessee. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.